హలో వెల్కమ్ టు ఎన్పిటిఎల్ ఎన్ఓసి ఎన్ ఇంట్రొడక్టరీ కోర్స్ ఆన్ పాయింట్ సెట్టపాలజీ పార్ట్ టూ సో అవర్ నెక్స్ట్ చాప్టర్ ఈస్ కాంపాక్టిఫికేషన్ ద కాంపాక్ట్నెస్ ప్లేస్ అ వెరీ సెంట్రల్ రోల్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ రోల్ ఇన్ ది స్టడీ ఆఫ్ టెపలాజికల్ ఆస్పెక్ట్స్ one always looks out ways of reducing a given problem from a general situation where the given space may not be compact to a situation when the space involved is compact compactification is a tool in this direction we shall study three important versions of it in this chapter we begin with the study of Alexandrov's one point compactification in full detail then take up one of the close related computers namely proper maps after that we'll study stone check compactification the third one see i mentioned three of them third one which is walman compactification that will be later on it will not be taken in this chapter because that requires some other notions to be developed so welcome to module 18 so first we shall discuss some generalities about compactification let x be a topological space let us tentatively have the following definition a topological space y may be called compactification of x if the following conditions are satisfied compactification space must be compact first of all so y is compact is first thing x must be a subspace of y so the subspace given x is enlarged to a another subspace but the enlarged space is compact so that is what we want what is how how far you want to enlarge not too large x must be dense in y so these are the three stipulations you would like to have then you can call y as a compactification of x at a first glance the above definition is perfectly all right however in order to be able to carry out a comparative study of various compactifications and so on we shall introduce slightly more elaborate notation so technically we have to be a little more precise okay but idea wise you have to keep just remembering these three things for a compactification must these three things fine okay but technically we will put it slightly differently okay so here is a technical definition start with the topological space x consider a pair ordered pair eta comma x twiddle eta comma y or eta comma something okay so what are these eta x twiddle first of all is a compact topological space and eta is a map from x to x twiddle which is an embedding okay so so you can use eta to identify x with a subspace of x twiddle okay the second condition is this subspace eta x is dense in x twiddle okay so with these two we are taking care of all the three aspects that we wanted namely this y which has been written as x twiddle here now okay is compact then eta is a subspace eta of x makes makes it makes x into a subspace of x twiddle there is a dense embedding the third one is a third one is a density eta x is dense okay now you look at two such pairs eta x twiddle and eta prime x twiddle prime suppose both of them are compactifications as defined as above we will say they are 
equivalent if there is a homeomorphism free from x to the to x to the prime such that the subspace eta x and eta prime x is remains unchanged phi composite eta is equal to eta prime okay it is not an arbitrary homeomorphism that is the definition such that is very important okay so this is easily seen to be an equivalence relation okay eta x to the is automatically equivalent to eta x to the reflexivity is fine symmetric symmetricness is built in here because if phi is a map from x to the x to the prime which is a homeomorphism phi inverse will be a homeomorphism which will also satisfy this property phi inverse of eta prime is equal to eta symmetry is fine similarly transitivity is also easy to verify so this is an equivalence relation so if you look at all the collection of collection of all compactifications of a given space x you can find this equivalence classes an equivalence class of such pair is called a compactification so this is the final definition okay so what we have brought here is not just some space not just the the embedding but an equivalence class of them that is one single compactification in other words when you are talking about a topological space you have the habit of identifying all spaces which are homeomorphic to that space as equal to that equal means are equivalent right in the same sense all compactifications of x x is fixed here which are equivalent in this one they will all be called one single compactification in practice whenever you are talking about a class you are always picking up a particular representation representation of that class some some member in that class and then you call that itself as the compactification okay so that is the practice that we are following okay or in the entire class you pick up any one of them okay that is called compactification so this much of liberty of uh, you know language we are taking but for rigorous definition we will all stick to this part all right so this is the picture for what is the meaning of equivalence classes this phi is a homeomorphism but its identity here eta composite phi is eta prime so this is what you have to remember in practice we usually take any one particular representative of such a class as a compactification though we keep in mind that we are dealing with a representative of an equivalence class also in practice we ignore specific embedding of x inside x twiddle and identify x with eta x then this eta x being subspace x can be thought of as a subspace of x squared the above definition can be adopted appropriately depending on the context for example you can keep adding extra adjectives for your compactification suppose we are dealing with smooth manifolds there are compactifications which may not be manifolds but you ignore them you say okay now i my x squared must be also manifold suppose you are dealing with only hausdorff spaces then x twiddle may not be hausdorff in the definition there is no hausdorffness condition right but i may want don't want to go out of hausdorffness so i may put extra condition x must be x twiddle must be also hausdorff and so on okay so that is the meaning of adopting this definition at various context at different context you can adopt exactly after that you don't have to keep on saying that uh, my configuration was also hausdorff and so 
okay in the in the in the beginning of the context you make it clear that's all on the set of all compact fications of a given space x we can introduce a partial order okay so eta x little is bigger than or equal to eta prime x little prime i am defining this partial order now if there exists a surjective mapping x twiddle to x twiddle prime again that is saying this property tau composite eta must be eta prime you can go back to this picture here instead of phi being a one one mapping you just take it as a surjective mapping that's all rest of the things are same then you will call this one bigger than that so this must be surjective mapping all right so that is the partial ordering is easily to see that okay x itself is x twiddle itself is bigger than or equal to itself and it is anti symmetric and it is transitive composite of two surjective map surjective and so on so this is clearly a partial order all right the above revelation is clearly reflexive and transitive what about anti symmetry so i said it is may not be anti symmetric but i have to be careful here it is not clear if eta 1 x1 eta 2 x2 are two compact fications of x each one is greater than or equal to other then whether they are equal that means equivalent or not see equality here is equivalence right look as a class so can you prove that unless you prove this you will not have uh, so you, <laughs> you will not have uh, you, know, you can't really call it a partial ordering right something x is greater than or equal to y and y is greater than or equal to x you should have x equal to y right so for that reason so you have to be careful here okay in general i don't know what to do but take the special case okay suppose all the spaces are hausdorff spaces then we are in a fine shape namely for if tau1 from x1 to x2 and tau2 from x2 to x1 are surjective mapping such that tau1 eta1 is eta2 and tau2 eta2 eta1 then it follows that tau1 tau2 eta2 is eta2 and hence tau1 tau2 is identity map on the dense subset eta2 x of x2 right since x2 is hausdorff and a function the two functions tau1 composite tau2 uh, and identity map they are both defined on the whole space and they are equal on a ten subset they must be equal because the set of points where two continuous functions are equal is a closed subset if the closed subset is dense also then it must be the whole space that's all likewise it follows that tau2 composite tau1 is also identity of x1 therefore tau1 is a homeomorphism tau1 tau2 is a, its inverse okay this just means that these two are equivalent okay so if you use the hausdorffness then you are in a shape so this is one strong reason why we will restrict ourselves to the study of hausdorff compactifications okay in our mind we will keep thinking about hausdorff compactifications mm -hmm. but in the definition we allow ourselves to go out of hausdorffness i haven't put any condition hausdorffness in the definition okay indeed we will study the third one which we study we are going out of hausdorffness for that out of the three examples that i have mentioned one more uh, remark since a compact hausdorff space is a 
t4 space and hence a tikhonov space tikhonov space is what 3 t3 and half space regular completely regular and uh, t1 and since any subspace of tikhonov space is a tikhonov space it follows that we will be studying only compactifications of tikhonov spaces this is the fallout of if you just uh, say i am studying only uh, hausdorff space okay suppose you have hausdorff space and you have hausdorff compactification then the original space not only just hausdorff it must be tikhonov space if it is not you won't have a hausdorff compactification so there is such a strong restriction here if you want to say okay i don't want anything other than hausdorffness okay so this is uh, whether we buy it or uh, don't buy it this is what uh, is there that's it so so here is a general command unless we prove the existence of at least one compactification all this will be useless <laughs> we will be talking in the void right it should not happen like that of course when x itself is compact then you can take x tool to be x and eta to be identity map there is no problem but suppose it is non compact then only you want a compactification right there seems to be no preferred way to get a compactification of a non compact space that is one reason why there are several solutions to this problem perhaps a method which may immediately occur to one's mind is the so called sx the sierpinskification of x however even if x is hausdorff sx may fail to be so all the time sx is always non hausdorff unless x is empty and sx has singleton point so if we want to retain hausdorffness taking sx is useless right start with any hausdorff space you may not get a hausdorff compactification at all okay however we now know that there are compactifications of non compact spaces okay namely you can take sx if you ready to uh, go out of hausdorffness at least we are not working in a void there are compactification okay from now onwards in this section we shall assume that x is non compact there is no point in discussing compactifications of a compact space okay so i may not mention x is non compact again and again for each n belonging to n namely natural number by an n point compactification of x we mean a compactification eta comma y where y minus eta x has precisely n points that means i have added exactly n points to the original space x okay that is the meaning of it for example it's easy to check that 0 1 the closed interval then this eta is inclusion map okay from closed interval 1 0 to open 1 take the inclusion map into the closed interval what you have done you have put one extra point or you can start with an open interval 0 1 and add two points 1 0 here and other other end 1 so you get this space is a one point compactification of this one and two point compactification of this one the inclusion maps are depending upon whether you start from 0 1 open or both 0 1 open 0 open and 1 open okay so you get a one point compactification as well as a two point compactification so this is an illustration just that's all it's very easy to see 
I have a question here, it's open question for you. Think about it, even if you don't get an answer, it's okay. Can you think of a three point compactification of 0 1, open control 0 1, which is house door? See, in both these examples were house door space. Okay, so that is a question. So think about it, that's all. Okay, so some more general remarks. Compactifications are always studied with some extra specification depending upon the kind of problem that we are interested in. It is not possible to discuss all of them certainly in an introductory course. So in this section we shall study two such examples. Later on we shall study one more. So these three being the most important ones in our mind. Okay. So I have already told you, namely Alexander's one point compactification and the stone check compactification. These two things we will study in this section. Alright. So let me begin with Alexander's compactification. Let X tau be any topological space. X star is a disjoint union of X with an one extra point which I am going to denote by infinity. This is modeled on what you call the extended complex plane. You must be using this notation where X is the complex plane C and that is infinity. There is no algebra or anything here, okay? neither even analysis, it is just point set topology. You should remember that. Let tau star be the family of all subsets A of X star such that if A inside X, then A must be tau. All subsets of X which are inside the tau, they are allowed inside tau star. So that is the first condition. Otherwise, what are they? they must be containing infinity, right? So, x star minus a, when you throw away a from x star, what you get? You will get a subspace of x, right? So, that must be closed and compact subset of x. Okay? So, this is the condition on tau star. Now, this tau star becomes a topology which is compact, topology on X star. Whenever X is not compact, this is the standing uh, assumption I have, but here this construction I could have done it for even when X is compact. If it is of any use, you can use it, otherwise you can throw it away. But for logical reasons, I could have done this one even for a X is a compact set. That is why I am telling whenever X is not compact, that is our uh, you know central uh, theme here. Then what happens? Eta X star is a compactification of X, where Eta from X to X star is the inclusion map. See, this is just a set theoretically, it is just X union infinity, so there is an inclusion map. Further, X star is Hausdorff if and only if X is Hausdorff and locally compact. Once again, we are hitting the notion of locally compactness here in Alexander's compactification. So, Alexander's compactification is able to achieve Hausdorffness provided we start with Hausdorff and locally compact space. So, this is the conclusion. Okay. So, let us these one by one, one or two things we have to verify here, right? Okay. First thing is tau star is a topology. What you have to do? Empty set is there because empty set is a subset of X. 
the whole space is there. Why? Because if you throw away the whole space, it is empty set. That is the condition here. That is compact and you know compact set of x. So that is easy to see. If two subsets are there already in tau, their intersection will be also in tau, so it is also there. If one of them is inside A, another one is uh, contain infinity, the intersection will be again inside tau, right? So union, arbitrary union of open sets is there because once one of them is closed and compact subset, the entire union, infi you know, arbitrary infinity that will be subsets of that one, closed subsets of that one. So it is easy to verify, I have verified it already, that tau star is a topology. This topology, when you restrict it to x, becomes precisely tau. So the inclusion map is a homeomorphism. Okay. Inclusion map x to x, x to x to infinity is a homeomorphism. Because every open subset here becomes open subset and vice versa under the inclusion map. All right. So, if ui is an open cover for x star, uh, I have to verify that x star is now compact. Let us say infinity belongs to u1. It has to be in one of the open sets. Put f equal to x star minus u1. Okay u1 being open subset containing an infinity, f must be compact subset of x star, closed and compact subset of x star. And ui, all the ui, intersection x, i not equal to 1, that will be a cover for x. You do not need i equal to 1 because that, that part contains infinity, the rest of them have to cover this one. Okay. Therefore, we will get a finite cover u1, u2, un such that f is contained inside u2 intersection f etc. un intersection f. Then it is clear that x star will be contained inside u1, u2 and un. Okay, you have to just come back to x by using one subset which contains one open subset which contains infinity. Okay, so x star is compact. Now come to the hypothesis, if x is not compact, then it follows that every neighborhood of infinity should intersect x. If x were compact, infinity itself would have been open subset, singleton infinity, because complement is compact and closed. x itself is compact and x is closed inside x. So that is not the case. Okay, singleton infinity complement will be x and it is not compact, therefore it is not singleton infinity is not open. Okay, so every open subset must contain some point of x, that is all, which just means that the closure of x is the whole of x star or existence. Okay, this shows that eta component x star is a compactification in our definition. Okay, it is it may be worth to note that x itself is an open subspace of x star. Singleton infinity is closed. Why? Because its complement is the whole of space x and that belongs to tau. Therefore, it is in tau star. Okay. So, x itself, eta x if you can, if you want to say, is an open subset of tau star, x star. Open and dense, this much we have seen. Finally, we want to show that x star is house star if and only if x is locally compact and house star. If x star is house star being a subspace, x will be house star. That is easy. Okay. Why it is locally compact? Let x belong to x and y belong to x star be any two points. So, I am talking about now here sorry I am talking about why x star is how star. If you take two points of x, distinct points of x, you can separate them 
inside exit cell therefore they are separated inside extra rods so now suppose one of the point is y uh, x belongs to x and y will not x star be any two points if y is not infinity take disjoint open subsets u and v such that x and x and y are inside v both of them are open in x star also so we are done so if y is infinity that is important case using local compactness of x we may assume that the closure of u in x is compact okay you can start with a open subset around u such that u bar is compact then x star minus u bar is a neighborhood of infinity in x star which is distant from u therefore x star is half star okay so i am proving here x star half star using local compactness and half starness of x okay the converse part i come now suppose x star is half star then being a subspace x is also half star moreover for x belonging to x if u and z are disjoint open subsets of x star such that x is in u and infinity is z then by the very definition u is inside x is open x star minus z is a closed and compact subset of x therefore u is contained in x star minus z because they are disjoint x star u and z are disjoint and u is contained in their complement it follows that u bar is compact because u bar is also a subset of this compact set. hence x is locally compact okay all right in hausdorff space we have proved that there are several equivalent conditions of local compact for each point if you produce a neighborhood such that its closure is compact then it is it is locally compact so what we have got is that alexander's compactification is a one point compactification it will be hausdorff if we start with a hausdorff and locally compact space and that is the most important special case that we are going to study further all right so i make this definition the above compactification of x is called alexander's compactification alexandrov compactification okay note that alexandrov's compactification is a one point compactification in the literature it is common practice to refer to it as the one point compactification of x especially when x is locally compact and half of space see there are many one point compactifications the compactification that we have constructed namely alexandrov's is a special one but in the literature is the one point compactification whenever you start with locally compact or so the people always refer to this one as one point compactification okay so we may also do that okay if it is not alexander we will specifically mention it that's all so we may sometimes follow this common practice all right is that clear okay so let us stop here we shall continue this uh, study of this one and bring the new concept of properness etc next time thank you